This brings us to the Lion Gate, and this is the outer gateway to the Citadel at Mycenae. And what we have is a gateway built of ashlar masonry. We have two monolithic posts on either side, capped by a monolithic lintel creating the gate. So we have our posts and our lintel. And this is very important because they use those lions above it for something very specific. It creates a relieving triangle. That stone above the lintel is actually taking the forces, all that weight that's trying to get into the ground above it, and moving it off the lintel and onto the sides, onto both the posts and the rest of the wall, because stone, again, does not have much tinsel strength. In other words, if you try to bend it, it will break. And it would have had a massive door that would have opened inward. Now, that would seem unusual. Why wouldn't you want it to open outward? After all, then, you know, it's more difficult for an enemy force to get to it. But being able to push against a door is much easier so what you want is to have it open inward because then to keep it closed i can put rocks against it and everything else to stop the enemy pushing it inward whereas if it opened outward they could potentially play with the hinges or somehow uh, get it open and it would have been a massive oak door that would have protected this the lions above are actually being borrowed from the ancient Near East, that idea of lion gates. So we're seeing the same idea here just being used in Greece, and it shows trade between the Mycenaeans and the ancient Near East. Then we have the Treasury of Atreus, which is actually a misnomer. It's called a treasury, but in fact it's a tomb, and here we're seeing some plans for it. And this is what's known as a beehive tomb. It looks, from the inside, like a massive beehive. And they would have built it and then piled the earth around it. So it's not carved into a hillside like we saw in Egypt. Instead, this is being built and then buried. And it's located outside the citadel walls. The ancient tradition is to always bury your dead outside of the city. You don't want to deal with the smell and there's always the thought that there could be evil spirits. Even today, most cemeteries were originally developed when they were outside of the city limits. And we see this very impressive doorway. We see a pathway that would have been covered in soil. And we see this relieving triangle over the doorway. Although here, instead of filling it with lions, it is left open. But it serves the same purpose, moving those forces around that large stone lintel. Now, the, uh, we also see the corbel vaulting, which here they've carved down and smoothed out as it moves up in that beehive form. Now, this is more or less what it would have looked like originally. And we see these massive oak doors that would have been clad in bronze, and then this whole area would have been filled with soil. So originally you would have seen a large hill with this sort of stone runway which surrounds the original path, but that would have all been filled in because once you bury someone in here, there's no need for anyone else to enter the space. And that was the original idea. The dome is simply creating the largest possible open space. That's why we use a dome. Uh, that's why we use it in public buildings, churches, etc. It creates a massive open space with no need for columns. It's also very, very strong if I'm putting force on top of it, such as here, I'm putting soil on top of it, and all of this weight is now pushed through compression down these walls and eventually into the ground. So it's an enormous structure, and it was thought of as a treasury because of all the things they found in it, but of course those were basically grave goods. So it's a misunderstanding of the purpose when it was originally found. 